Pat Love back from Love Healing Heart. Somebody needs a lot of encouragement. Maybe many of you dealing with different types of difficult situations. You may be in a deep quandary and you can't figure out how to climb your way out of it. And it may not be time to come out of it because God is working things and he needs you to stay in it while he's resolving with his own strength, with his own power. You get me? Now, I'm only going to read Psalms 27 verse 14 as a reminder of what we're talking about. <clears throat> this is a segue from the first video. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now listen to this. This is Pat's two cents. I'm referring now, I'm going to tell a story of something that happened in the book of Exodus. We're dealing with Moses. Now, God told Moses which route to take, correct? <clears throat> well, sometimes in the obedience of God, in the center of his will, things go flippity-flop and go crazy and we wonder what the heck is going on. But, you're in the center of God's will, correct? And it makes you question, did I hear from God? <clears throat> How could I hear from God and this happen or that go wrong? Yeah, sometimes in obeying God, things seemingly go wrong, but God's got his hand in it and he's working his stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys, still dealing with that lung thing, you know, going through the healing process. Now, listen, here we are with Moses and the Israelites. Now, they're starting to get antsy. They are afraid. Why? Because they can see the Egyptians pursuing after them. And they're wondering now, God said that, you know, we got the victory. He's, he's taking us to freedom. How, why would he even let them follow us? Why would he allow the pursuit, the hot pursuit? Is he going to take us back to Egypt? What's going on? Is he a God of his word? Is he going back on his word? What's going on? Well, what does God do? He sends a pillar of fire and the fire stands between. Have you ever seen a tornado filled with fire i think they called it i think they call it a a fire tornado or a <clears throat> i can't think anyway tornado filled with fire and this is what's between them the enemy and god's people sometimes that's all is between you and your enemy but you can't see it they can now what happens is the enemy now has been stopped, dead in their tracks. And the people are at Moses' face talking about, hey man, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what's up. But you need to make sure you and God are talking the same language because this don't look like y'all know what you're doing. <clears throat> yeah. So the enemy can't pursue any further, but they are within reach. Yeah, they can see each other's faces. Israel, the people of Israel, God's people, are now stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea, so to speak. So after God gets through dealing with Moses, Holy Spirit comes on him. He knows what to do. He raises his staff. Excuse me. He raises his staff. And he aims it over the ocean, over the sea in front of him. And this wind comes, this whirlwind. Oh, my goodness. It's whipping, it's roaring, it's whistling, it's, it's howling. The, the water starts getting troubled. Things are going on. And the people are really getting scared now because you got the fire here. You got the enemy right there. And we got this, this chaos starting up and the stirring up. And it's like, oh, my goodness, what's going to become of us? Well, 
Let me answer that question. God made a way where there was no way. He'll do it for you. He will make a way where there is no way. He opened up that sea, dried the sand, made a wall of water on the right and the left, instructed the Moses to lead the people on dry land. Dry land, not damp, not wet, not muddy, dry land. And they crossed that, that sea. They crossed all the way to the other side. And then God does something really puzzling. And sometimes we wonder, well, why would you allow the enemy to come after me like that? He removes the fire. And he allowed the enemy, the Egyptians, to pursue hot pursuit on dry land. And the Israelites are really scared now because, hey, God forgot to leave the fire up and he's letting them come through. But they had to watch, be still, and see the salvation of the Lord. They're watching as God muddies up the sand and makes the wheels of the chariots hard to turn, makes it hard for the horses to run. So what does that do to the enemy? It slows them down, correct? It slows them down so much so that when the beginning of the enemy's line and the end of the enemy's army is stuck right in the middle, God begins to release the water and it all closes up and every one of them Every one of them is drowned. God, by his own hand, is able to get rid of your enemy so that the enemy that you see now, you will see no more forever. Trust in God. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Trust, I say, in the Lord. God knows what he's doing. Sometimes you do have to be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still and watch God work. Be still and shut your mouth. Be still and sit down. Don't jump up. Don't start putting out fires. Let God handle the fires. You don't have the equipment. And you see what he'll do. You'll see your thing, all the wrinkles in your life, iron out. And you didn't even pull out the iron and plug it in. The wrinkles just start to mysteriously disappear like your enemies. You hear me? You be of good courage, you guys. I don't care how afraid you feel. Fear God. Don't put your confidence in man. Because see, this is what happens when you put your confidence in man. You fear man more than God. You become intimidated. But see, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So don't put confidence in what man can do to you. Because if God says no, man can't do diddly squat. But if God allows it, oh, he's got something up his sleeve. As they say, he got something for him. They're not going to like it. But he's got something, and for you, he will make a way where there is no way. You can't see a way out. You can't figure a way out. You can't pay your way out. You can't dig your way out. But God, but God, you have the right one on your side. Trust in him. He will not leave you nor forsake you if you only knew how much God loves you. If you only knew the intensity of his love, if you could just feel it, you would understand. 
God isn't a deadbeat dad. God isn't an absentee mom. God won't throw you into foster care. He will own you and he will care for you and he will protect you. Be at peace. God bless you.